it's taken its own sweet time to get here from announcement, pre-order, dispatch and delivery. But at last, the Avro Ansem 148 from Airfix has finally arrived. Is it worth all the fuss? Find out right here on Gary Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I'm having a look at the brand new Anfro Anson in 148 scale from Airfix. From the moment this kit was announced in early 2022, it has been on the order list of thousands of modellers, the pre-orders taking even Airfix by surprise. I saw the pre-production builds in July and was blown away by the detail. The designer told us about the lengthy and detailed process of bringing it to life. We waited for the container ship to make up its mind and turn left into Felixstowe instead of right into Rotterdam. But at last, I've got my hands on it, so I'm really, really excited by this. Now, if you like the video, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the button below. And if you haven't done so yet, do hit the subscribe button and then the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos as they are released. And of course, if you really like what we're doing here and you'd like to support the channel in a more concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks or through any of my partner programs. I'll have a look inside the box in a moment and I'll be having a look at anything else Anson that you can build at the moment. However, first of all, I just want to find out what's so special about the Avro Anson. The Avro Anson was a twin-engine general purpose aircraft built in the late 1930s and early 1940s and was developed from the Avro 652 airliner. Although only two of those were built, the design was successful in a competition against the de Havilland DH-89M for a coastal maritime patrol aircraft. It was the first type in the RAF to be a twin-engine low-wing monoplane and the first in the RAF to have retractable undercarriage, although this was manually operated, requiring 144 turns of a crank to get the gear up or down. The Anson was powered by two Armstrong Sidley Cheetah engines of around 350 horsepower each. At a cruise speed of 250 km per hour, or 158 miles per hour, it had a useful endurance of about four hours. Its rugged steel frame construction is evident in this mid-air collision of two aircraft in Australia. Astonishingly, the pair landed together, the upper aircraft was even restored to full flying condition. The Anson was initially used as a maritime patrol aircraft, although it never sank enemy shipping. The box art for this kit depicts an event on the 1st of June 1940, when three Ansons of number 500 Squadron RAF covering the Allied evacuation from Dunkirk, were jumped by nine German BF-109 fighters. In the ensuing dogfight, two German fighters were shot down and a third damaged, with none of the Ansons lost. However, the Ansons' biggest contribution to the war was as a multi-engine trainer for bomber crews. Pilots, bomb aimers, navigators, radio operators and air gunners all learnt their trade on these aircraft. The Anson went on to serve with most Commonwealth Air Forces, as well as many others around the world. It was developed through various training and communication versions, a large number of which served around the world in civilian use after the war. Just over 11,000 Ansons were built, and around 40 still exist today with three aircraft in airworthy condition. A Mark I in New Zealand, and a Mark 19, and a Mark C-21, both flying in the UK. Here it is, here's the box, here's the kit at last. What a glorious piece of artwork on the front that is. Very good. Let's have a look inside. So, plastic parts of course. Huge amount of plastic for transparencies, although there are some options on there. We have two frames of plastic here. 
another two huge frames of plastic here and another couple of frames here these are duplicated so these be engine parts no doubt so it's six frames of plastic all together gray plastic and one frame of transparency of course the instructions of course the decals such have a look at those there we go and some scheme markings oh that's rather nice and of course the our scheme marking and a rigging diagram oh that's exciting okay so let's have a look at all these things in a bit more detail here is sprue A, or frame A, if you will. Uh, so it's the fuselage, essentially, uh, two halves of the fuselage, tops of the fuselage, with and without gun turrets, tailplane, the floor of the interior, and the steel framework here as well. Then there's frame B. These obviously the wings, bottom of the fuselage, upper and lower surfaces of the wings, and the engine nacelles. And I'm guessing these are either flaps or they are ailerons. Maybe ailerons, by the looks of things. Frame C, various interior bits and pieces, uh, control panel, pilot seat, uh, just general cockpit area, sides of the cockpit, some more bits of engine nacelle, things like that, or some guns. Plenty of gun options on here. Frame D, and we have the upper parts, I think, of the uh, horizontal stabilizers, tailplanes, the rudder comes in two pieces, uh, elevators here, tops of the engines, wheels, undercarriage assembly, all the little um, bits and pieces of the engine here, all very interesting, um, exhausts and tailplane, tailplane rudder, wheel, tail wheel, whatever you call it. There are two copies of this, frame E, um, one for each side of the aircraft, obviously, because these are the engines. Engines, undercarriage parts, um, these are the um, little sort of blisters that go on the outside of the engine on some marks, the earlier marks in particular, propeller. Yep, everything you need to make the engines on here. And then there's frame F, which are all the transparent parts. There appear to be two sets of side pieces for different versions, I presume. There's the early and late versions of the uh, the windshield and all that. I think the early version had this much sloping one. The late version was set further back and was more upright. Various bits and pieces. The direction finder blister up here. Um, covers for the lights in the wings. ID lights. And, of course, the... Uh, nose transparency and the gun turret mid upper gun turret the decals as usual are cartograph beautifully painted beautiful color density really sharp and really well in register colors look really good uh, maybe they don't come out terribly well on the video but the colors do look pretty authentic to me and all the marking variants are there the only odd thing which is slightly unusual for airfix of late is that everything seems to be a bit more mixed up there's i'm used to seeing like common decals um then one aircraft then another aircraft then another aircraft these are a bit more sort of mix and match but i'm sure it'd be easy enough to navigate those and again looking close up the uh, colors look pretty well in register fairly sharp instruments look interesting this this <laughs> This is a lovely touch here. Copy of the pilot's notes for the aircraft. That's that's really, really funny. You know, for a training aircraft, of course you've got the pilot's notes on board. Absolutely lovely. I like that. Well done then. Um, everything else, absolutely sharp. Um, absolutely clean. And really lovely colour. Uh, you know, oil warnings, all that sort of thing. Absolutely grand. Not too many stencils, which is nice. Um, you know how much I like a stencil, um, almost as much as I like a photo etch. But there you go, very, very good quality. Looking now at some of the plastic, uh, it looks all very nice. The you know, rivet lines are quite sharp. 
the panel lines are okay. Um, perhaps a little, a little more gentle than on some FX kits of late. Um, the folding, that well, the stretching of the uh, fabric over the wing, of the structure of the wings and over the main structure, is kind of interesting. Um, there's bits that, you know, there's obviously an un there is an underlying uh, wooden part here that gets picked out. Uh, I wonder if that was found on the 3D scans that they did. But the parts look nice, the parts look sharp. Um, I can't really see any major bits of flash or anything like that, anything untoward. Yeah, all the pieces look very nice. That's pretty much the same story in the wings. The panels have plenty of detail and the this sort of concave stretching here on the on the fabric is actually really quite convincing. Um, it's nicely done. It's not too much, but you know, with the right lighting, you'll see it. Um, a lot of the time, you won't but put the right sort of directional lighting on, and you'll catch it. Which I guess is is what you would have seen on an Anson. You know, most of the time, you wouldn't have noticed it, and then suddenly, you know, late in the evening or afternoon or whatever, low light of the sun, you'd have seen it. But it all looks very good. And then for the things like the instrument panel, you know, nice raised bezels if you want to dry brush them yourselves, or obviously they will take the dig holes nicely. Obviously there, there's going to be a, a set where you can get instruments and photo etched bits and pieces. But generally the detail looks really quite nice. Um, that's quite important on this plane because, of course, you can <laughs> a lot of this you will actually be able to see, un unlike most planes, because there is so much glass on the side. So we will actually better see some of this detail, which is lovely. Hurrah for that. This new 148th scale kit from Airfix enters the market not exactly brimming with competition. In 148th, there has been the classic airframes kit of 2006, which appeared in five different boxes with early and late versions of the Mark I. This was also released by Special Hobby in 2007 and again in 2011. Before these, with the Sanger kit in the 1990s, which is a rarity today. For more variety, you could go to 172nd scale, where Special Hobby made their own tuning in 2007, with an early version released in 2011. If you look really hard, you might find an Aero Club kit of the late C19 version, but of course, it is the Airfix kit that most of us remember. From a 1962 tooling, this kit had been released many times over the years, most recently in 2008. Perhaps it will appear as a vintage classic alongside its larger stablemate. And finally, for the Space Challenge, there is this tidy little kit from Welsh Models in one 144th scale. So there it is, the new Airfix Avro Anson in 148th scale. This will be kit of the week very, very soon. So keep an eye out on the channel to see the build videos for that. Better still, why not subscribe and hit the bell? Then you'll get a notification for when they turn up. And of course, if you like any of my videos at all, please do remember to like them with a thumbs up in the Imperial style on the button below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.